July 17, 1970, 37-year-old Tony Rizzuto and 38-year-old James Severin were assigned to patrol Chicago's Cabrini Green housing project. Now, the two officers walked across the baseball field while patrolling the area. Seconds later, the officers was killed on the spot by snipers. The shots been fired from the sixth floor apartment bathroom in the high rise. Not only one cop, but two cops killed. So yeah, the police department wasn't taking that too well. And that's when the police department started moving like gangs. The police stormed the towers, locking the towers down and kicking doors down to several apartments and made arrests. They ended up finding three suspects, which ended up being a 23 year old, a 18 year old, and a 14 year old. The weapons used in the killings were two 30-30 rifles and at least six handguns and the seven rifles were confiscated in the apartment apartment search. And I'm pretty sure that scared the hell out of the cops. And it's been called the Mount Rushmore of the scariest urban places in America. Now and after that shooting, the police began neglecting patrols of those projects as law enforcement became terrified of those buildings, which allowed the gangs to take over the complex completely. And the sniper fire sporadically happened throughout the 1970s as gangs used this tactic to shoot their rivals. Now, Cabrini Green housing project was nothing to play with. It was super dangerous and you have to be a bad motherfucker if you was a cop that survived working in that area. And I'm pretty sure it was like going to war, having to watch out for snipers. Now, the cop said out of his own mouth, while arresting gang members in four years, they confiscated over 660 various type of weapons. They also arrested five snipers at different times and locations. Now, this project provided 3,000 apartments. And during the 70s, drug addicts were accidentally falling from the sky rises in the breezeway areas. And gang members were throwing their rivals off the balconies. To drug addicts sleeping in the hallways, the gang members up and down the steps. The television show Good Times took place in the Cabrini housing projects, and the movie Candyman was shot in those buildings. Now, in 1981, Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne moved into the fourth floor apartment, backed by police officers and personal bodyguards. Now, she wanted to prove to the city that if you had constant police presence in that area, crime and gangs would go away. It was very, very brave of her. But when she was there, of course, the gang violence slowed down. But when she left, it went up again. Those three weeks she was there, she was slowing down money. Now, the funny thing is, she ordered the back doors to be welded shut in order to prevent attacks against her from the back. But the gangs were taking notes and would use the same method. Gang members can now hide from police and rivals during shootouts, closing off anyone from coming at them, which gave gang members more time to stash drugs and weapons. Millions of dollars were being made in those buildings, but the buildings remained looking damaged and run down. The project grounds outside in the hallways had trash and drug needles, and the children had to play in those conditions. Growing up in those conditions, you just thought it was normal. Many units were shuttered and vacant, allowing dope fiends to use them. Walls were for graffiti, damaged doors, windows, and elevators. The buildings were also infested with rats and cockroaches, and it was never within the city's budget to bring any exterminator. Most exterminators did not even want to enter the building anyway. Now, with gang members patrolling the area with AK-47s, Tech 9s, pistols, 357s, and Uzis, because the cops weren't coming nowhere near those projects, especially at night, gang members and drug traffickers harassed residents. Females couldn't walk around by themselves. You had hundreds of people there that didn't even live there. October of 1992, a sniper on a Cabrini high-rise hit seven-year-old Dontrell Davis in the left side of his face. He was pronounced dead on arrival at Children's Memorial Hospital being the 943 Chicago homicide that year. Now, the witness saw shots fired from a window of the 10th floor apartment at 1157 North Cleveland, about 300 yards from where Dontrell was gunned down. The building was one of several Cabrini high-rises that were more than half vacant, but used frequently by gang members. And it ended up being Anthony Garnett that claimed he was aiming looking to hit Vice Lord, so he was trying to hunt Vice Lords and end up hitting the little boy. Now, Garnett would receive 100 years in prison. Now, for decades, they tried everything from the mayor putting her life at risk to redevelopment. Sometimes you have to destroy something completely to build. Due to high crime, poverty, drug use and corruption, and mismanagement in the projects, plans were made to demolish the buildings. In May of 95, the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development took over management of the CHA and almost immediately began demolishing the buildings. With the last building coming down in 2011, we have to this day remaining buildings that are just row homes. The new project housing units replacing the high rise were built or rehab in mixed income communities meant to break up concentrations of poverty. So that's it for tonight, y'all. I want to thank all my subscribers, thank all the viewers. 
lockdown. This week was just like a Chicago history week. You know, I wanted to cover all the glory days and all that. But, you know, if you like the content, you know, like, subscribe, hit me up in the comments, follow me on the gram, and I'm out.